Welcome to Q School 4 of 4. So you are the faithful, you are the few, and we have more people that'll be jumping in as we get started. Cooper, any more sales? I got a couple more, yeah. A couple more sales. Let's give Cooper a hand. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, good job, and I'm really excited for second semester. Second semester, we're going to be teaching content creation, and I found some new AI tools that are amazing. Oh, my. If you have a business and you're saying, how can I keep up with content creation, AI will take some of what you're doing and, and really save you a lot of time. So with all these tools, I say that AI doesn't replace humans, but a, a human that knows how to use AI will. Okay, so that's very important to realize that. Lots of stuff has happened in the, the news lately, and we're not going to talk about it because trends get dated, and if we talk about it, it'll definitely be dated. But I've been following what's been going on with a lot of news headlines, and let's just say that there's uh, an opportunity for light in this dark world. You know what I'm talking about? So that's why it's so important that your businesses are creating more things. So let's have people jump in. We have some people online. Thanks for being here. And I'm going to uh, connect my screen as well. If you can, turn to page two, page, or sorry, page three. Let's go to page three. And page three will tell you about what is uh, the past sessions. So the past sessions, don't forget, I, I had to pick which sessions we were going to use in this whole Q School. Big shout out to Dr. Mack. Dr. Mack will be joining us on the eMind podcast in December, Dr. White in January, so I'm very excited about that. But I've been just thrilled by the support of Cedarville. Uh, a lot of people have been watching online as well and finding out more about the school and you know, expressing interest in grad school as well as undergrad. So let's turn to page three and you'll see that create your VPS and identify your customer avatar. And I show this because I think too many times we just jump onto the next thing. Has anybody tweaked their VPS in the last couple weeks? Anybody said, you know what, I changed a few words out. Anyone, anyone changed their VPS at all? Pretty good? Your value proposition statement? Cooper, you did? Yeah. What, what did you change in your VPS? Essentially, I just made it uh, more simple. You made it simpler. Yeah. I tell people all the time, like, one of Steve Jobs, one of his expertise was that he removed clutter. And especially with book designs, that's one of my businesses, we really have to remove clutter. Um, a book cover is often shrunk down, and that's what we're talking about today. It's shrunk down to a thumbnail. And so you might say, hey, you know, I don't mind a book that's really big, and hey, you can see everything, but you have to remember that's going to be a thumbnail on somebody's phone, and if you have a lot of clutter, it's not a good thing. In fact, there's a famous designer who basically said that art is finished not when there's anything left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. Very, very interesting design concept. That, that brilliant design is essentially simple. I think I told the story that uh, Microsoft came out with an ad in the newspaper about one of their new computers, and it was thousands of words. And they took out a big display in a newspaper. And I mean, it told all the specs, all the data, about that Microsoft computer and then Apple came out with one a few weeks later and it said, think different. That's it. Big two words, think different, and that's it. And it tends to be that the most uh, stickiest marketing message is often the simplest. If you can write a really good book in 30,000 words versus 90,000, it's actually better. Now think about that for a moment. Um, if you have a root canal and it takes you six hours or six minutes, which one are you going to use? 
right? If it's the same quality and you can actually have it done in six minutes, no one's paying the doctor extra money to say, hey, I want to sit there for six more hours. So you as service providers, you need to realize that people want answers quick and fast, okay? So let's jump in to the second one, write your manifesto. Has anyone written their manifesto? Uh, first of all, how many of you have written a manifesto so far? Okay, so Addie, Kim. Kim, you wrote one. Yeah, you, you wrote it. You wrote it with the six minutes. It just wow, fantastic. So you might be able to take that six minute manifesto and put it up on Amazon. Are you currently an Amazon author? Yeah. Right. You're 70% done. I have, no, I have no idea where to go from here. Well, we're going to teach you what to do with that book. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay. And what about anybody else? Anyone else write a manifesto? I think Addie has one. Will has one. Will, did you do that recently? Um, yeah, I did as a part of our Q uh, business team for the uh, nonprofit that we're starting. Okay, you're starting a nonprofit for Q, for Q school? Counseling services, fantastic, love it. Okay, perfect. So there's some people online that are watching as well. We have Scott again, thank you very much from Indiana. We have Nathan from New Hampshire. If you're here, go ahead and type where you're from. We'd love to have you uh, do that, as well as share the live stream, tag a friend who needs to learn about publishing. All right, and then in session three, we talked last week or a couple weeks ago about starting your LLC. Has anyone started an LLC in the past couple weeks? How many of you have an LLC? Oh, a lot of you. Okay, great. Perfect. All right, so even from a tax standpoint, I highly recommend having an LLC. Just basic things. If you're working on that laptop with your business, rather than going and, you know, putting it out of your personal expenses, you can do deductions, these types of things. So. I highly recommend uh, having a LLC. You can open up a business checking account. So there's all kinds of benefits that happen. I mean, even when COVID happened, you could be getting certain credits and certain dollars at times based upon if you had employees or not. So I recommend that definitely. Even credit card points, huh? All right. So let's go now to number four. Number four, page four. By the way, if you haven't uh, downloaded it, we have it on the screen as well. So here's what I'm going to suggest to you. By the way, I have a special dedication uh, today for someone. Someone, this is a surprise. Nobody knows this is coming. Um, so I wanted to just give a special thank you to someone in the room because the real reason I'm here at Cedarville is because they think like an entrepreneur. So uh, when I prayed about coming here, it's almost a year ago to the day. I went to an International Center for Creativity dinner. Jay, were you at that one? So you know it's Monday this year, so it's almost a full year ago that I went to a random dinner and was fine with my businesses, everything was going great, but I sat down next to Travis Smith and Travis talked about Cedarville and how they needed an entrepreneurship uh, professor. And I started listening very closely because I applied 18 years ago and, and some of you know that story, I had gotten rejected as a Bible prof. So he said, oh yeah, we've been looking for several years. And he said, I'll connect you to the Dean, Dr. Heyman. And I, I, I kind of thought, you know, you, you talk to people and you, you hear things and you're like, oh, that's nice. But sure enough, the next morning I woke up and Dr. Heyman had already sent me an email. And I thought, this is exciting. This, is what, this, this could maybe happen. But I, as I talked to Dr. Heyman, I said, you know, I'm happy as an entrepreneur and I love running my businesses. And he said, I think we can make it work. And so... 
Um, I wrote a book this last few months, and I wanted to dedicate it to Dr. Heyman. So come on up, Dr. Heyman. Let's give him a hand. So this is the, this is the first copy oh, ever. So you get to open it. And uh, this could be awesome. Yes. So it's Cedarville Colors, and it's the E Mind. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. So it's not Michigan Colors, it's Cedarville Colors. And I, I wrote right here, I want to read this to you. I wrote, to Cedarville University, thanks for allowing me to fulfill my mission, igniting souls by setting free world-changing ide world ideas. It's an honor to serve your incredible entrepreneurs, and especially to Dr. Jeffrey Heyman. Thanks for your flexibility in making this a successful collaboration. Well, thank so you, thank sir. you. We're glad to have you on board. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. So he did not know that was coming, and I just, I'm really excited about Cedarville because very few universities would, would partner with an entrepreneur because we're kind of tough to control. <laughs> we're we're kind of tough to control, but I feel like it's going amazing. And even Q School, you know, the concept of this was an idea and the, the staff have celebrated it. So let's jump in, and this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. It is books. And so I want you to realize, first of all, I know I'm skipping ahead in the notes, but the second largest search engine in the world, guess what it is? Does anyone know? Amazon. Amazon is the second largest search engine in the world, and it just crossed the threshold for the largest delivery. It's now past FedEx, UPS, the post office. So imagine you, Jay, or Addie, or Nate, or Emma, imagine you on the second largest search en engine in the world for free and the largest delivery. So people are now coming to Amazon, typing in questions, and get this, folks, it's the only search engine tied to your wallet with a one-click buy. I mean, think about that. You're able to not just rank on, you know, people always used to talk about, ooh, we want to rank on Google. Well, ranking on Google is fine, but then they need to click, then they need to go to your website, then they need to figure out what you're selling, and then once they figure out what you're selling, then they might go and buy what you're selling. But with Amazon, they go in there, they search, and when they search, your name pops up with a book that says, just click the button and we'll ship it to you in two days with a countdown timer that if you buy it in the next five minutes, you'll get it by tomorrow. So that's the beauty of you all getting on Amazon. And you might say, well, what if I, what if I only put a two-page ebook on Amazon? Who cares? In that two-page e ebook, you give your top value, Cooper has cold weather tips, right? He could create an ebook about cold weather tips and list it for free. Do you know this? He could list it for free on Amazon. It's called a Kindle countdown deal. All right, and I'm going to show you the inner workings of this whole little thing we have here, okay? So share screen. We're going to try to find this here. Don't worry, I'll get it. I'm going to teach you all this stuff today. So, while I'm getting this set up, I want you to talk with your neighbor about what your ebook would say. What would your ebook say? Anyone have any thoughts? All right, check this out. This is uh, and I'm going to try to darken the screen a little bit, just so you can see what this is. Is that bad, Will, if I do that? Is that bad for the Q school? It's a bad? It's bad, okay. Okay, so you can see it. So folks, this is called Author Central. Author Central is absolutely free. And Author Central, check it out. Here's what Author Central allows you to do. Oh yeah, I, this is how I can do it better for this room. Author Central allows you to create a profile. 
You pick a picture. You'll look better than me. You got hair, okay? So pick a nice professional picture. And then below that, you can hit your bio. So, Kim, you could put your bio right there, right? And then you get your author page link. So you could put this as your signature in your email and says at every signature that you send out, check out my book on Amazon. Or if your book's free, enjoy my free book on Amazon. Immediately you borrowed the stage of Amazon. Does this make sense? Folks, listen, in the English language, writing a book is a big thing. We say Tiger Woods wrote the book on golf. Michael Jordan wrote the book on basketball. We even use the English language as a term of credibility. Now, last time I checked, when you get introduced sometimes to speak at places, they don't say, um, let's have Will come up. Will's bio is he cleans his room. Will is also good at tying his shoes. You know, Will dresses nice. No, no. Lots of times with your bio, they want to highlight professional things. And what they often say is he's the author of. Imagine, folks, it's not hard. Imagine you be, being a best-selling author on Amazon. It's honestly not hard. You want to know the trick? The trick is that when you publish a book, you get to choose categories for your book. So instead of choosing these large categories like education, they have categories of categories. Do you know this? I'm going to show you this here in a moment. Let's go to Amazon, and I have no idea. <clears throat> under books, let's go under books here. And um, what's kind of a bummer is that I need to, um, I need to tell the new people here Hold on one second. It's tough to do two screens, but let me think of a book here. James Clear. Anyone know what book James Clear did? Atomic Habits, okay? All right, so let's show the uh, StreamYard people here. Hang on one second. I'm gonna go to share screen, window, here we go, perfect. So here's Amazon, and when you search for a book, Look at the books on the side. Do you see that? Those are all categories. And now, let's pick, let's pick for Dr. Heyman here. I don't know, business and money? But now under business and money, we can choose a category of a category. So what, what, what looks good? Economics. Economics. And that might be where it ends. Nope, not at all. Now we have a category of a category of a category. What do we got? Free enterprise and capitalism. Free enterprise and capitalism. That's it. That's where we stop. And if you're like, oh my gosh, what did I pick? Uh, you can basically find that, um, write it down when you, when, when, you, when you find those categories. But that's exactly what we want. We want uh, books. Sorry, hang on one second. Books. And then it was, uh, what did we say? Business and money, economics, and then we said free enterprise and capitalism. That's where it ended. So that's his category. Now, what if you wrote, you have papers, I know you do. You've got an e-book, and you've got papers you've written too, the Proverbs 31 women, woman. He's got lots of things. He could take these things and put them all on Amazon and he could then make them for, for uh, money or free, depending on what he wants to do, ebooks. And you have spent zero money, just a little bit of time. And then he chooses these categories of a category. And then what he does is he makes an announcement to his friends. And the friends could be the Plaster School of Business. It could be your email subscribers. Cooper, how many email subscribers do you have now? 500, love it. And that all was created in last week's um, session three about surveys, remember that? In fact, Sam was in my office today. Sam is gonna be there tonight. 
at the uh, basketball tournament December 1st, and he's building his email list by a survey with Google forms on vote which should be our next shirt. So this is how you can build your email subscriber list. And you basically have a Google form, you ask a question, and then at the bottom, you only ask a couple questions. One is, which shirt do you like best? Second one, can I email you? Can I connect with you in the future? And if they say yes, great, they're on your email list. Well, you have 500 people. Imagine if you sent your 500 people, hey, my new book just came out on Amazon. Because you're part of my email subscription list, um, I want to give it to you free. It's cold weather tips. If they all download that thing for 99 cents or for free, you might hit the Amazon coveted bestseller flag. You know about this? That is the coveted Amazon bestseller flag. You screenshot that thing once you chip your category, and now you're an Amazon bestseller. Cool? Now again, I work with clients that want to hit big time goals. So they want to hit big lists. And, but this is a great starting uh, place for everybody. Make sense? Now, will becoming an Amazon bestseller change, change your life? What do you think? No. OK? So we did this for my son's uh, and my daughter's books just because I wanted to prove a point. So I'm going to go Keegan Oberbrunner. He's going to be a freshman here next year. Do not tell him I'm doing this, OK? Do not tell him. So here we have video games are educational. Ah, you like that? So in third grade, he wrote a one-page paper, or whatever, 2019, I guess it was. I think his first one was, um, uh, you see, oh, Henry Ford, 2014. Look at that, 18 stars. So uh, 18 uh, reviews, four and a half stars, and it's two pages long, and he became an Amazon bestseller, and Oprah called him up. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Oprah did not call him up. Uh, but here's the book. And you might say, well, why in the world did you do this? Uh, well, we got a hater there. We got one three star. OK, that's fine. You'll get haters. Don't worry. Um, but a lot of people liked it. And we put right in there that it was a second grade invention project, right? And my point is this, folks. You're getting found on search engines. So what's the alternative? What's the alternative, you know, that nobody can find you? So I'm not taught. Listen, I believe your identity is in Christ. I believe your value is in Christ. But I believe if you're a business, you need to be found. You see what I'm talking about? We can over-spiritualize sometimes these things and say, yeah, but you know, if God wants to give me clients, he'll just drop them in my email inbox. He might. He might. But even God put a star above the manger. I call that marketing. Even God used angels to announce the birth of Christ. I call that marketing. So I believe God is actually for marketing. And if we are bad marketers, I believe that's our fault. OK? I don't know. What do you think? Anyone disagree? I don't know. So, so let's talk about this special thing that Kim um, is asking about. How do we get our book up there, OK? So I'm going to share this with you. Did I, people are still online, so I didn't, I didn't offend too many people. OK, just checking, just checking. I'm kidding. All right, so let's go now. Um, this is how to publish your book for free. I encourage you to, you might be like, why is he teaching us this if this is his business to publish books? Because listen, there's, there's e-books, and then there's books in 40,000 channels around the world, and there's books on Wall Street Journal. It's all good, OK? It's all good. Um, and just so you can kind of see here, I don't have, this isn't earth shattering here, but in the last month, so I'm just going to share this with you here, um, just so you can kind of see, it's not, I'm not talking about like crazy profits, but here's, here's the last month, 71 books, looks like a, a bunch of people pre-ordered the e-mind, 
a little bit of unhackable, a little bit of day job to dream job. You'll see here print versus ebook. But you can see, like, we have a lot of books. These are just my, my kids and my books, okay? So you're not going to make a ton of money off a book. Anyone who tells you that is lying or selling you something. Even me, a publisher. So the way we do it is we turn your book into a business. Does this make sense? So here's what I really want you to do is to think, like Cooper, how could my book lead to other income streams? So Dr. Heyman, actually how we met before that was you spoke at my conference. So here he is a teacher and he spoke at a conference. So you can have a book speaking, all right? You can have a book that leads to a membership. What is a membership community? Is anyone part of a membership monthly community that costs money for anything? What is it? Uh, business with Impact Society for women in business. Women in business. Are you, I'm part of monthly things. Are you comfortable sharing the monthly fee? I pay annually, and I was one of the founders. Okay. <laughs> so it's a lot more than what I paid for. Okay. Um, Okay, so here's what's exciting. Watch this, folks. This is where numbers get pretty nutty, okay? So I have a calculator here, and let's say $39 a month, and this is where you might say, well, what would be the membership? Jay, you sell wooden bikes. Could you have a membership community where you're teaching people who are, I know you have like a whole day where they come and spend a couple thousand and build the bike, but could you have a membership community where they're getting new, new tips, new seats that you're te okay. So here's what gets pretty nutty. You take $39 and you say, what if I had 100 people, 100 people in that membership community? That's interesting. Now you go times 12. Whoa, $46,000 for a membership community because you took $39 times 100 times 12 months. Whoa, you see how this gets pretty nutty pretty fast? But your book is what leads into the membership community because it's free to produce and you put it on the second largest search engine and inside the ebook you have a link for your membership community. And you say try it out for a dollar for a month and see if you like it. You see what I'm talking about? So let's, let's just stop here for a moment. Anyone have any questions about taking something you've written or your manifesto, putting it on Amazon, having it lead to other products and services? Yes. Is there a particular order of the 18? Is there a particular order? No. I have clients who literally, uh, I will show you his website. This is where you're going to get pretty, pretty surprised here. Okay, so let's hit stop share. Um, I'm going to give you a real life Christian chiropractor who's late 60s, has a heart for missions. I met his son in missionary training school. And watch this. This, is, this gets pretty crazy pretty fast, okay? So he's a guy. I'm just showing you the power of books, and then I'll show you how to do this in a moment. So this guy's name is Dr. Pat Luce. Okay? Now, I will tell you this. He'll probably see the recording. I don't think he'll get offended. We're friends. He's not the most dynamic speaker. Now, is he a bad speaker? No. He, got, he practices, but he's not whoever you think is an amazing speaker. He's not, he's not that amazing of a speaker, but he gives good content. So here's what he did. He came to me and said, hey, Carrie, um, I got a bunch of notes about stuff I teach, how your body has seven systems, and there's people that I wish I could help, but um, they don't live near me, 
And so uh, wait, wait till you see a few of these pictures. It's amazing. Okay, look at this. Before, after. Amazing. Before, after. This woman was on her deathbed. Okay? So he said, look, I treat patients, but I can't treat them all because not everyone can come to Iowa. So I want to write a book. He had no idea for a course or anything else. So I said, okay, let's, let, let's get a book out for you. And he did a book, and he did the first four. He did audiobook, hardcover, softcover, and ebook. This book began changing lives. And then he said, I want to turn this into a course. Okay? Now, look at some of the, the first course that he created. You can't make this up here. Watch this. If you're not on, um, let me see here, Seven Systems Plan. I like to just back up everything that I say so that you can see that I'm not making this up. How many members does that say right there? 2,000 members in his private free Facebook community. Now, it's not free. They had to buy the course. But he manages the community in Facebook. Now, I don't recommend that because they're not, face, it, Facebook owns the uh, group. So they can shut down the group. So that doesn't excite me. I like, to, I like control. Not going to lie. Okay? I like control. But he started it on Facebook, but it's for paying members only. Now, how much do you think his course is? What do you think? Take a shot. $99. $99. Now, let me ask you. You can charge based upon the transformation. Okay? So if you have a course and the course teaches you how to change your oil, maybe you can't charge that much. But when you create a course that literally is comprehensive and provides massive support, and this is, look at this folks, 100 pounds he lost. Okay? And this is not like a one-off, I mean, here she is, here she is, she's stronger than me. Look at that. Her back is like, I don't know how old this lady is. She's, she's ripped, right? Anyway, now how much do you think you can, you can charge? Maybe still 99? 499. $499. He probably started at 499, but let's look and see how much this course is. 100% guaranteed. So if you're not satisfied, he refunds $897. You might say, oh, wow. But you're going to get 14 lessons. You're going to get the toolbox. You're going to get this. You're going to get that. You're going to get that. You're going to get that. Even live classes twice a month. So he teaches live classes based off the course that he actually is teaching from Iowa with his patients in the room. Let's do the math for a second. $900 times 2,000 members, $1.8 million off of a book-based course. You see where this starts getting a little woo-woo, a little nutty? Now, am I saying that's easy? Am I saying that this happens to everyone? No. This guy took it serious. He created a YouTube channel. He said, I'm going to be teaching on this, but it all was birthed out of a book. Make sense? That's why a lot of people that I work with, they actually will try to get their books away at break even. Has anyone ever seen on Facebook, get my book for free, just pay for shipping and handling? Has anyone ever seen those book-based funnels? That's why these are still profitable. Because even if they're getting their books out for shipping and handling, they're acquiring a customer, and the content is so good in the book that it leads to an online experience that then has additional products and services. So we're going to break into a group right now, just while I get queued up to teach you how to get your book on Amazon for free. But I'd love for you to just talk with each other and say, what do I even think about what he just said? Is that fair? Is that unfair? People are thanking. Oh, let me show you this, by the way. Just to be really silly at the end, 
He had so much success with that course, guess what other courses he created? The constipation course. What in the world? The autism course, the diabetes course, the sleep course. He's now created other courses because he now understands how, how easy it is, okay? So let's break into groups. I'm going to get all set up for Amazon here. We'll get you right, right in your book here. But talk, talk amongst each other and talk uh, even online with the comments. What do you think of this? So Lillian, you got, you got to get Dr. Heyman over. You got to, you, you know, ask him to come over there, all right? That's Anastasia and Lillian. Hey everybody, um, thanks for being here. So uh, I'll, I'll bring myself on here for a second. Hey everybody, it's Carrie O'Brunner. Uh, I hope you're having a great time. Love to hear your comments, your thoughts about what book idea you have. It's been a blessing to have you join us the last few weeks. Big shout out to Cedarville for um, allowing us to do Q School. It's been a deep honor. Um, I started Q School because I just had a lot of students coming in over and over again asking the same questions. And I knew I couldn't scale my impact if I had to keep saying the same thing over and over again every single week. And by the way, can you hear me? Can anyone comment if you can hear me? Um, just type in if you can hear me and I'll keep talking. I want to make sure you can hear me before I keep going here. Maria, can you hear me on um, Facebook? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got it. Okay, I think Sean said we got it. Okay, perfect. All right, so Sean, I'll keep talking. Thank you, Nathan. Awesome. So, um, yeah, I wanted to – hey, William Woods. Hey, come here, Will. Big shout-out to this guy right here. This is William's son. Will has been uh, helping a ton. He's been doing all the video. He caught the vision, and uh, I couldn't have done it without yeah, you. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, my goal is to teach um, all kinds of students here, get them to realize that you don't have to wait till college is over before you start creating influence, impact, and income in the world and igniting souls. So um, Cedarville has just embraced my unorthodox um, teaching concepts. I'm much more a practitioner. And uh, yet I value higher academics a ton. So it's been a great partnership, in my opinion. And I'm just glad that they're willing to, um, you know, keep, keep me around and stuff. So I still run my businesses hardcore. Uh, I mean, we, I have uh, ignitingsouls.com and the blockchain life. And um, we publish, protect, and promote intellectual property and turn it into 18 streams of income. So I'm still running that. I have a great team but I'm able to come here as well and teach the students. So right now they're talking in groups and uh, yeah, if you can complete your homework, that's great. Um, we're going to dive into this right now, but I want to give a little bit of context. So get ready and uh, we'll get started here. Okay. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna get the, um, the handout up. So here we go. All right, everybody. Maria, can you still hear me? Let's, uh, let's check. Okay, you can all hear me. Um, anyone wanna share uh, a quick thought? And uh, anyone wanna share a quick thought about, yes. And you know what, I'm gonna ask you to come just so these people can hear us, okay? So come on, come on down. Joni, hey, 
I knew I knew I have to ask you first, then and then invite you down here. But Joni's someone who, um, yeah, we even talked at the early summer, uh, you know, whatever faculty thing, and you've been doing great stuff. But what what were you talking with Kim about? Well, when you showed the Amazon thing, I was I've done landing pages and you know learned how to do certain stuff, and I was just like. Amazon just gave me my own landing page for free. Yes. And that was blown away. And it's, and it's the largest, the, yeah. it's the second largest search engine and the largest delivery. So they just gave yeah. you all. And explain to the people what a landing page is, because I know you've been studying internet marketing for quite some time, but what is a landing page? So it's basically just a page on your website where you direct people to get their free ebook. So let's say you advertise a link for your free ebook. They go to your website, it's the landing page, they put their email in, you collect it. So it's just another way to do that, but Amazon's just done it for you. Exactly, so. love it, love it, okay. Anyone else have any thoughts uh, um, as you broke into groups? Yes, I have a question. you got a question, yeah. Yeah, come on up, just so these amazing people can hear us, yeah. So, so how do you think about your, your landing page, getting a book on Amazon, if you also are thinking about a different business venture that's totally unrelated to your book? Uh, like mm. you've got a professor in the back who's got a great yeah. engineering, but he's got a different product. Yeah. And anything I do is separate from my econ. How, how does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So I do tell people all the time, clarity attracts, confusion repels. But look at Elon Musk. Tesla, Twitter, or X, Neuralink, right, Neuralink, Starlink is another one, The Boring Company, like you start seeing that you are a diverse type of person. So I have 13 books out, everything from Christian to fiction to blockchain tech to personal growth you name it. And so, yes, am I confusing my brand? Maybe, but my banner is big enough called Igniting Souls. And I like to dabble with things. So I don't have a poetry business and, and, and. But Dr. Heyman asked a great question. If he has a business, but he also is an academic, these days I really believe that we understand we're diverse people. Um, athletes and entrepreneurs, and shoe companies, and makeup companies, and singers, and Taylor Swift, and Harry, what's his name, Styles, and, and an actor, and a singer. Like, we literally live in a world right now that is very forgiving with people who have multiple interests. So what I do think you need to do is make sure that your ethics are all sound, that will create massive confusion and hurt your brand. Oh, over here I'm uh, smoking, cussing, something, something. And over here I'm some, some, you know. Multiple personalities is very confusing. But I think it's okay to have different types of brands. And this is where you see even car companies with your high level, your mid level, your low level, like Apple, right? Apple's into different types of things. So I feel like it's okay. Um, but in your bio, that's in your author page, that's where you can link it all. That's where you can link the story. And look for a thread. C.S. Lewis was an apologist and a children's author, you know, and screw tape letters. And like you start seeing like, oh, I guess he was diverse too. But I think that your bio is where it kind of links it all. Maybe I answered your question. Maybe I did not. A little bit. Okay, all right. So let's jump in now. It's 3.45, so we're already halfway through. That went by very quick. So let's jump in and let's show you what you need to basically consider. Books can increase your clarity, your credibility, your currency, and your clients. So do I think every professor at Cedarville should be a published author? You know, I don't think it's a bad idea. Now, I'm not going to go on record and say, oh, it's a mandate, but there is a term in higher academics, fill in the blank, publish or perish. Now, you might say, well, we need journals and not popular books. Yeah, I see that. So I could tell you that 
probably four people have read my dissertation in my life. And they were all on the dissertation committee. And that book is so technical, and it's a sub of a sub of a sub of a sub. But I will tell you that there is a growing, um, there's a whole growing section of professors like Jonah Barger with Contagious. Boom, professor. Adam Grant is a professor with a popular book. Brene Brown. Like, you start going through the list, and I think what professors started realizing about 5, 10, maybe 20 years ago, maybe more, I don't know, is that we can write for the academy, or we can use the academy as a platform and contribute and write books that will affect popular culture too. So I think it's, there's nothing wrong. Now you may get poo-pooed by your peers or something if you're in academics. I know we have some professors in the room. If you write books for popular culture. But I did take my dissertation and dumbed it down and it became a book for, on Christian discipleship that's been used and in, in, in helped the lay people of the world. So I think we can do that, okay? Students, do I think every student could be a, a published author? Yes. You, how, many, how many of you students in the room have ever written a paper? Wow, 100%. What if you spent a little bit of work and put that book up, put that e-book up? And you might say, Dr. Oberbrunner, that's five pages. Who cares? Who, does anyone say, well, Lillian's a five-paged ebook published author. No one's actually, I'll tell you the truth, nobody's that interested in you or me. I'm, I'm just telling, I'm, we got to get over ourselves. If you write a five-page ebook that is going to change someone's life, who cares if it's a five-page ebook? The fact is, you're on Amazon, you're an author, own it. And here's why I say that, because I see that honestly, most of this is psychology. Most of this is self-limiting beliefs. Trust me, I've published over a thousand authors. Over my 20 year career, I've trained over 250,000 authors, not even kidding, with all my online training. Everyone gets inside their own head. And everyone says, what if my book blows up? What if it doesn't blow up? What if no one reads it? What if my mom reads it and hates it? What if my sister-in-law reads it and thinks I'm an idiot? I see it all. A book is a mirror of what's going on inside. And this is why, honestly, most people never write a book. Because it's putting yourself out there. And here's what I say to people all the time. The stage doesn't ruin you, it reveals you. And so, uh, John Maxwell has been my mentor uh, over the years at times, and John would have someone come up to him and say, John, I'm so glad I met you. I bought your first book. And you know what John would say? I'm sorry. That was a really bad book. In other words, a book, the danger of a book is it's a snapshot of who you are at that moment in time. And so, yes, if you wrote a book 15 years ago, like me, it's a bad book. And there's some people who say, I never want to then publish. Fine, never publish then. You know, never give a speech, never do anything. So we need to kind of get over ourselves in the publishing world. Does that help anybody? Just to be like, don't put the bar so high that you freak yourself out. And this is why writer's block happens because you're putting so much pressure on yourself. The next line has to be amazing. And I feel this every time I write a book. I'm like, I hate this book. It's horrible. No one's gonna like it. And you gotta be like, this is where Seth Godin, a great marketer, has a great principle. He says, if someone's dying in the desert of thirst and you have water, are you going to not give them the glass of water because there's a spot on the glass? Now, you're not going to polish it perfect. In fact, you're a cruel person if you don't give it to them because it's not polished perfect.
So take it for what it's worth. I know I'm not telling you to write dumb stuff. I'm not telling you to write junk stuff. Trust me, I give my books so many edits and so many proofreads, it's not even funny. But I'm just telling you, it will never be perfect. I think even the scriptures have scribal errors, not the original, but I think even some textual criticism and back to my seminary days, I think there was even some scribes who copied things down wrong at times, okay? So we just need to get over that. There's only one source of truth and that's, that's God, okay? Make sense? All right, so let's keep going. I would love for you on page four to write down how could a book increase your clarity? I will tell you this. I always speak with more clarity and confidence after I write a book, 100%. I, I many times write a book because I don't know the answer. And I'm like, I'm gonna write a book so I can figure it out. I didn't know one thing about blockchain. And I thought, this thing's big, this thing's gonna be big. I wanna figure it out, so I wrote a book on it. Here's who I always write to, by the way. My former stuck self. That's a great way to write a book. You write to your former stuck self. If you write to an audience, it will feel inauthentic. People will feel like, who is he talking to? You know? But when you write to your former stuck self, why is that a good thing? G give, me, give, me, give me an answer in the room. Why is writing to your former stuck self smart to do? Yes. started this job, the day you started and you didn't know what you were doing. Love it. Talk to yourself. Yeah. Right. And it just gave them that freedom to express So people who are listening online, she's basically saying that, you know, you understand that former stuck self person. You, you know that person. Yeah. I would say you have empathy mm -hmm. because you were in pain and you needed help. So now if you write to your former stuck self, people feel that empathy. And when you write to your former stuck self, it's one person, and it feels like you're sitting at Starbucks or Renova and talking with a person. It's conversational. Yeah, Nate. I would say you're able to articulate your true ideas better. So someone's not going to resonate if you're writing to an audience, but if you're writing to your old self, they're kind of going through the process of what your old self's going through, and they can resonate with that. They resonate with it better. Nate said that. Love it, love it. Yes, anyone else? You're good. Okay, love it. Credibility, we already said, in the English language, so-and-so wrote the book on blank. So even our culture and languages understand that when you write a book, there's a credibility piece there. I will, I will tell you this, you can get on podcasts easier. If you forgot what I said in session three, go back and listen to it, but I taught you a strategy of how to get on people's podcasts in a non-self-promoting way. And one of the things is that you're an author. They do not say, hey, let's bring so-and-so on the podcast because they mowed their lawn. You know, no, they say, hey, you wrote a book, let's, let's talk about the book. A book is a great piece to get an a, a interview. All right? Um, it gives you currency. What do I mean by that? Some of you are in my show up, filled up um, digital marketing. We're studying one of my books on currency. What kind of currency? What is currency? What, 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 why would a book give you currency? What do you do with currency? You spend it. Currency's value. So when you write a book, you actually create value. You create value. This is why people give you a rating on Amazon because they're rating the value that you gave. And if you get a bad star and a lot of them, uh, they're giving you their opinion. Now, some people are undone by Amazon reviews. I have gotten one stars. Oh my gosh, I've gotten one stars. And they used to bug the junk out of me. And I'm like, who is this person? I'm going to track them down. I'm going to have a con What do they mean? I'm going to have a conversation with them. And what I realized is you just need to realize that you're not going to please everybody. And so there's a lot of good growth that happens by writing a book. Clients. You will absolutely get clients from books. I just know you will. 
One day you're going to get a letter and an email and it's going to say, Dear Lillian, dear, dear Anastasia, you don't know me, but I read your book and it changed my life. Let me tell you how. And you're like, what in the world? And what this is, folks, is I, I teach my clients this. This is passive impact. And I forget if I told this group this yet. But everybody in the internet marketing world loves passive income, where you make money without doing something. You create a course and now it sells and sells. But what if you could create a, something that created passive impact? That's what the Apostle Paul's letters are. I don't know the Apostle Paul, but the Holy Spirit has used those letters to change my life. Passive impact. Make sense? All right, next. Nonfiction books, they should solve a problem. Folks, I imagine most of you in this room are going to be writing nonfiction. I just spoke to my daughter's um, eighth grade class on Tuesday. None of them wanted to write nonfiction. They all wanted to write fiction, which is fine. They all have hum Hunger Games and everything. But I'm talking about nonfiction. If you write a nonfiction book, you're solving a problem. So you can use that on page five and, and, and think about what problem will your book solve. Feel free to do that. Amazon, second largest search engine in the world. Uh, you can just Google this. You'll find many examples. There's links there. You might say, well, I thought it was Google, then YouTube. Well, fine, Google and YouTube, I think, are owned by the same company now. So it's technically, they're using the same algorithm. So technically, Amazon is the second largest. All right, so you can look there and you can see, but get, the, get this, um, here, this is all the way back from 2019. Where do U.S. internet shoppers typically start when digitally shopping for a product? Not on Google, 49% on Amazon. Interesting, okay? So again, these are all different. I found so many articles, I didn't want to include them all, but you can just find some of those. Um, Amazon. Last year, almost half of the online shopping searches began at, at Amazon. Um, again, different articles, all that stuff. So choose your title. I, I include at the very end Amazon um, uh, helpful tips. If you click this link right here, you're going to get me teaching you the pinch method, P-I-N-C-H. P stands for promise. Your book would give a promise. Um, this little video here is, um, what is it, uh, three minutes and 41 seconds. Watch it. I'm not going to show it to you now, but it basically teaches you how to create a killer book title. I hold some up. Four-hour work week. Notice that's the promise. Four-hour work week. Get it? That's the promise you're getting when, you're get, when, you, when you get that book. Okay, next. Intrigue or information. Good to great. That titles can provide information, right? Platform uh, is, is uh, a book by Michael Hyatt. It's a need, need to have a bigger platform. Um, C, Curiosity, Future Crimes. Very interesting book. Got to share that. Love it. You know, it's going to take me too long. I'll just, I'll, just, uh, I'll just hit it, and then they can look at it. H is humor. So these are, these are five different examples, okay? But check out the main thing, folks, for you who are watching online, just click the link here, choose your book title. All right? Now let's go, um, so anyone have a book title that they might call their book? By the way, book titles are not copywritten. So Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Blink, so did a lot of other people. Unless you go through a copyright, um, a trademark process, like Purpose Driven Life, which Rick Warren did, he did trademark that. Copy, uh, book titles are not trademarked. So any, any, anyone, if you share it today, it's okay if somebody steals it, but anyone have a book title today? Yeah. How to Grow Your Digital Influence. How to Grow Your Digital Influence, so you might say, Carrie, is that a good subtitle? It could be. So that could be a good subtitle, but finish the, finish the phrase, how to win friends and influence people. One of the most famous books out there on personal growth. 
but it's a long title. Today we actually have shortened a lot of book titles. Grit, Angela Duckworth, Contagious, Jonah Barger, Atomic Habits, James Clear. You know, look at your genre too, because your genre tends to have different types of book titles. What I'm, what I'm more concerned about is subtitles. Watch this, this is a really cool trick, okay? Tim Ferriss did this for Four Hour Body, Four Hour Chef, Four Hour Work Week. I'm on page nine. This is his subtitle for the Four Hour Work Week. Notice it, folks. Three verbs, three benefits. Escape the nine to five, live anywhere, join the new rich. That's the subtitle for the four hour work week. So you want your title to hook four hour work week. Ooh, interesting. What if he called it the 39 hour work week? Would people have been like, yeah. No, he called it the four hour work week. Now, I get it. Some of us in the room were like, where's the data? I get it. In higher academics, we're inclined that way. We're like, where's the data? Where's the study? Do you know what his original title was called? You can Google this and find this out. The Millionaire Chameleon. What if, what if he came out with his title called The Millionaire Chameleon? Would people have been like, ooh, I'm in? No, it didn't hook. So the four hour work week created an image in people's mind. Now they're leaning in, and here's the purpose of a subtitle, write this down, okay? Nobody cares about subtitles except, watch this, point of sale and SEO. Point of sale and SEO. In other words, when people pick up a nonfiction book, they say, hmm, interesting. The e-mind, interesting. What am I gonna get from it? How to think like an entrepreneur and gain an exponential advantage. Oh, okay. That's what I'm gonna get if I spend time and money. What am I gonna get for the four hour work week? I'm gonna escape the nine to five, I'm gonna live anywhere, and I'm gonna join the new rich. Verb, escape, live, verb, join, verb. I'm not saying that you always need three verbs and three benefits, but that's a formula that worked so well for Tim Ferriss. If you look at the four hour chef, he did the same thing. And if you look at the four hour body, he did the same thing. Okay? Any questions about subtitles? Let's talk about that. Any questions? Anyone, anyone have any questions? You want to run a subtitle by me? You're, you're pretty good. Anybody online want to? Uh, we. Uh, okay. There's a guy named Brian McLaren. Remember this? I don't know if you remember this. He was a very liberal, edgy author. He wrote a book that was so long for the subtitle. It was ridiculous. He was trying to make a point. It's called Generous Orthodoxy. He broke all the rules. A Generous Orthodoxy is the name of the book. And the subtitle, they had, to stop, they had to stop writing the subtitle. Why I am missional, evangelical, post-product, look, look at this. This is his subtitle. So that is like the joke, the longest subtitle I've ever seen in my life. Is that, is that nutty? But he was trying to make a point. In other words, his theology is whatever goes, <laughs> pretty much, right, Dr. Haven? So this guy's book, I mean, this was a book where he basically said, look, I believe anything. All right? So again, like, I don't recommend the book, and, and you might hate me for this live stream or whatever, but this book was edgy. And, uh, you know, it was uh, emergent church back in the day before you were all even born or young or whatever. But we had to battle that um, as uh, pastors back in the day. So that was a long subtitle. Now, you can have some subtitles that are very clear and concise, right? Um, they're kind of like, uh, I think Blink, Blink by Malcolm Gladwell, I think is really uh, um, short. 
the power of thinking without thinking. That's pretty cool. So there's some that are very short like that. Malcolm Gladwell's tends to be short, but I like your default to be Tim Ferriss, three benefits, three verbs as a start. But then, no, not all my books have that method, but that's a good method to start with. And the method that you want, here's what you say. You say, what's the conversation going on in someone's head? So literally, Tim Ferriss said, my clients want to escape their day job. And notice there's a chronology that happens here too. They first escape their nine to five, then they get the freedom to live anywhere, and then they get the wealth to join the new rich. So your subtitle can actually take people on a chronological journey too. And your books can become, because we got to keep rolling fast now, your books, I recommend your book, your nonfiction book is broken down into three parts. So this is literally the three parts of my book called Day Job to Dream Job. I did newsjacking. Does anyone remember, remember my digital marketing class? What is newsjacking? Yes, take a popular headline, story, metaphor, you newsjack it. So I newsjacked Shawshank Redemption, and I said your day job is like your Shawshank, your dream job is like your Zihuatanejo, and then I literally traced the story, and I went prison, plan, payoff. Here's the three parts of a nonfiction book. You ready? Part one, the problem. If you go to the doctor's office and the doctor says, Will, thanks for coming to my office today. Here's your medicine. How are you going to feel as a patient? Unheard, angry, and untrusting. He didn't even take the time to hear your problem, or she. So the first part of a nonfiction book is usually talking about the problem. It builds the fact that, oh, the author knows what I'm talking about. They understand the problem. Ooh, there's a little bit of research even in there that they articulate the problem. Part two is often the solution. My, my formula is for my clients is 15% of the book, part one. 15% of, of the book, part one. 80% of the book, part two. So I want the solution to be the 80% of the length of the book. And, and the solution, all it is, is it's broken down into simple steps. That's it. Chapter one, step one. Chapter two, step two. So you break down your solution. It's called a framework. You break down your framework into simple steps. And then part three is your next steps. And honestly, the way I teach it, it's 5%. And it's, you like the book? Let's, let's help you out further with some of the 18 streams of income. Now you don't say it that way, you don't appear salesy, but you basically say, you know, thanks for going on the journey with me. I'm here to, I'm here to help you go deeper. You've read the book, now let's take the next step. Cool? Any questions about this so far? All right, your table of contents. Um, I like what I call you can write this down. This is my own little phrase. Quotable, timeless truth. So you name your chapter titles, quotable, timeless truth. Let me give you an example. You can write this down. John Maxwell taught me this. John Maxwell's chapter is so boring. Name, ready for this? 21 Laws of Leadership, you ready? The Law of Sacrifice, ooh. That's not, that, that's not that exciting. But here's what he did. To go up, you must give up. Ah, you see that? The chapter's called The Law of Sacrifice. To go up, you must give up. You see that? Another one, 21 Laws of Leadership. The Law of Magnetism. Not that exciting. But then he says, who you are is who you attract. You see what I'm talking about? 
So I want your, your chapter title to not be boring. Make it like a quotable timeless truth. Think, it, think that somebody could take your chapter title and actually put it on a graphic on Instagram. Cool? And I think ChatGPT could help you with this. I really do. I think it could. By the way, if you use ChatGPT to write your book, you have to declare it. Amazon will make you declare it. So I'm not somebody who says, oh, just have ChatGPT write your book. In fact, it will be a bad book. Why? Because it's pulling from the internet. People can already read the internet. What makes your book exciting is your story. You have to put real life stories in there. So I'm not saying it's bad for a first draft or a skeleton or a table of contents, but you gotta weave humanity in there, okay? Make sense? All right. Ready to see the, uh, the, the, the goods? Here we go. So we have 18 minutes left. I'll show you what website I use as a uh, cheap start. Now, can you go deeper? Absolutely. Um, but if you just want to get started with an ebook, you go to KDP. It stands for Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP. This is for free. This is Amazon's publishing service. Now, here's, here's the drawbacks. Your book will only be on Amazon for the most part, okay? So, the, I mean, the beauty of it is it's on Amazon, the second largest search engine in the world. I mean, that's amazing. But, you know, you might not see your book at Barnes & Noble. You might not see it at Books A Million or Waterstones or Chapters Indigo or Indie Authors or all this stuff. But who cares? Get started, okay? And you literally hit create. <laughs> you see how hard that was? You all catch that? Oh, the people can't see it online here. Let's show them. Hold on one second. Will, you tell me if the people see it online, okay? In a moment. They see it? Okay. So what I literally did, folks, I went to KDP, and then I hit create. And then you can hit create an ebook, a paperback, a hardcover, a series, or a vela. And you can read what those different things are. All right? And then you literally hit ebook, and then you hit English, your title, your subtitle. I don't do a series. I don't do an edition number. Because it's an ebook, you don't need an ISBN. You don't need an international standard book number. They're going to give you for free an ASIN number. So Amazon's literally going to give you their own protection of your book called an ASIN number. Now, if you go into print, you're in, you'll need all. That's why I think what I'm teaching you today, just publish an ebook. Okay, we can get into much more sophisticated things and talk about expanded distribution and other bestseller lists. That's all very technical, but just get your current stuff as an ebook. Okay? You put your author, you put your description, uh, you own the copyrights, you don't, you're not producing anything sexually explicit. I know you're not. You put your age of your people, what's the youngest age? You can literally pick, you know, a baby. It's, they're just trying to protect young people. Your primary market, okay? Um, so I clicked no there. And then your keywords. And then you can even hit make my Kindle ebook available for pre-order. And you can set it for six months from now. Whoa! Did you catch that? You could put an ebook up and say, I'm not publishing it until April 24. <clears throat> then you hit next <clears throat> and you'll upload a cover. They have a cover creator where, as long as you own your own picture, you can create it or you can create a text cover. What's a good website to create? Graphics, Canva, everybody who's young said it. Canva. So Canva, you can create a free cover. Then you upload your ebook. 
And because it's not a print book, you don't need to worry about all kinds of tricky interior design and all this stuff. So literally an ebook is amazing. Now, does an ebook have limitations? Sure. You can't stand at a stage and say, hey, meet me in the back. I'm selling my ebook and I'll sign your copy. Right? Ebooks have limitations, but ebooks open the door. An ebook is a book. Yes? So are you saying that we could like just fill this out today and I haven't even written one word and it could start generating people into my email list? If, so here's the thing. You will not be able to get their email address. However, inside your ebook, once you publish it, you provide an offer that leads to your website. That then, you know, like, so you would say, um, thanks for reading this ebook. Hope you found it helpful. To claim your free gift, go to blank, blank, blank .com and tell me where to send the video series. So you can use Amazon to build your email list, but Amazon will not give you the email addresses of the people who buy your, your, your book. Yeah, good question. Other questions? So let's just get into some nice Q&A here. Who's got some questions? Any questions about publishing your first ebook on Amazon? I recommend uh, putting it low price. If you so, they won't even let you go more than nine ninety nine. If you go more than nine ninety nine, then by the way, you get seventy percent of royalties. So if your book sells at ten dollars, you get seven dollars. Now. Uh, if your book's good, um, charge $9.99. If your book is very short, I would, I would offer it. They, uh, Kindle has what's called a um, uh, KDP Select. Write that down, KDP Select. As you go through the process, they'll say, do you want to enroll in KDP Select? If you're only publishing your ebook on Amazon, I would say yes, enroll. The only reason you don't want to enroll in KDP Select is if you're also going to put your book on Barnes and Noble Nook and Kobo and Apple Books and all these other platforms which kind of require a lot more brain power than we have for today or you need a publisher like me. But the point is just use Amazon just use Kindle, just use KDP Select, and they're going to give you these special deals. They're going to give you what's called a countdown deal. They're going to give you a, a free KDP where you can make your book free if you want. And then what you do is you save all your energy for the release. And the release is like to announce to your friends that, uh, that your book came out. Like, my book's coming out today. I would say have an online party. Have an online party where somebody interviews you, and the beauty of that is that then you spike attention. And when you spike attention, you'll spike purchases, and when you spike purchases, then you'll hit that orange bestseller flag. If you choose a category of a category of a category. Make sense? All right, yes, Jay. Some books don't have a problem to solve. No, if you were to showcase your wooden bikes with pictures, love it. There'd be all kinds of people. You know that. Jay is humble here, but Jay, you had, um, what was the big company, uh, the guy's magazine, GQ? Um, Men's, Journal. Men's Journal did a whole article on his wooden bikes. He has a business that he wants people to see his work. So you already have the Instagram pictures. Put it as an ebook. Love it. And that will create interest. And then you put it at the back of the ebook or at the front of the ebook. By the way, use QR codes in your ebook. Why? Because people are read it on their, by the way, everybody on planet Earth can, can have Kindle app for free. So what you do is you put, you put a QR code at the beginning of your ebook and says, um, thanks for downloading this ebook. To enjoy the full benefits from this book, 
scan the QR code, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll access all kinds of additional bonuses. They click it, now they go from an online reader to an email customer. Now you can follow up with them. So Cooper especially. You see that? You put a QR code. And if you don't know what QR code you should use, use a free one. I'll show it to you. This is my favorite one. I'm going to show you how to do this. Watch this. Little tricks. So this is the one I use. It is called QR code generator. Here's the trick. Never log in. If you log in, then they want you to keep paying for the QR code. And if you change the QR code, you're, you're hooked. So here's what you do. I can create a QR code. Watch this. I go, I go copy. I come here. I hit paste. And watch, I'm going to hit return. I'm not logging in. I'm not doing anything. Hang on one second. I'm going to go to Cedarville. Oh, hold on one second. Let's go to cedarville.edu. Here we go, cedarville.edu. Let's come to QR code. Let's pop in the QR code. Let's hit, let's hit um, uh, download. Look at this at the top. You see this? See all the little blue stuff happening right there? That means it's thinking. Now it's going to put it right, right over here. Look at that. See that? Boom. There's my QR code. Somebody scan that QR code. Does it, lead, does it lead you to cedarville.edu? I think it should. Somebody please tell me yes. It does. So that's how you create a QR code. That's the website I like. I do not log in. I do not do anything because then otherwise you have to pay. And you literally drop it in and hit download and then it does that little thinking thing and then you got it. So now you put that QR code in your ebook and now people go from reader to your website for free. You just, you just hacked the second largest search engine in the world. You got on there for free advertising and if you choose the right title, subtitle, keywords and categories, now you have an audience there. And you can put this as an email signature. Check out my, new, check out my book on Amazon. Make sense? All right, other questions? Questions, comments? Is anyone, is anyone like overwhelmed? You feel good? Yes. No, he 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 hired our team and he did a he did a print book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he did a print book, but he didn't just throw his book out there and say, "Hey, let's have the 897 roll in." He got serious about creating a YouTube channel where he taught the content. And then here's, we call this the stealth close. This is a real strategy. The stealth close, this is kind of fun. This is funny. Uh, the stealth close is, oh, by the way, if you, like the, if you like what I shared today, you can find more in the book. So it's content marketing. Content marketing is you don't talk about the book, you talk the book. Really, really important phrase here I'm, I'm teaching you guys and ladies. Content marketing is you don't talk about the book. Hey, let me tell you about this book. You should get it. It's the Bible. It's really good. It's NIV. It's got, you know, a good binding. It's got right, nice paper. That's talking about the book. Talking the book is Isaiah 7, 8. It will not take place. It will not have, you know, you see what I'm saying? So you have to give them. And my digital marketing class Someone explain the Jimmy Dean sausage strategy. Where you, give a little sample. you give a little sample, and what happens? Usually, when you go to Costco, Sam's Club, you're not, you're not even hungry. You see the nice Jimmy Dean lady. She gives you a sample. What do you do? You try it, and what do you do? You buy it. So that's what you're doing. You're giving people a sample. All right? Yes. The illustrator. Yeah, we don't know where to go from there to find, like you said, completely stop what's happening. 
She needs an illustrator for her children's book. Ready for your mind to be blown here? Ready? Ready for this? All right, so check this out. Fiverr. Oh, yeah, do you know about Fiverr? Do you know about Fiverr? Children's storybook illustration. I will illustrate your storybook. For ten dollars. Now, you just open yourself up to the whole world because somebody in Pakistan or Albania, ten dollars for them might pay for their month of groceries. You see what I'm talking about? And by the way, Fiverr doesn't mean that you pay them and they take your money. It means you pay them, it sits in Fiverr until you're happy with what they've done. And most of them say they will do endless revisions. And here's the little trick with Fiverr. Watch this. You look up here in the corner and you say 66 means they've had 66 gigs that they've done. And 4.9 stars and they've had 66 gigs. So you can tell really quickly if this person, this person has had one gig. I do not recommend that you hire them, okay? This person um, has had 21, two. Most of the time I find people that have had like so many, right? So the point is most of them are starting at 10 bucks and uh, that's how you find your illustrator, okay? All right, any other questions? You got two minutes. You good? Yes, Will. Am I going to cover the end of the session? What's the end of the session? What's that? Page 13, Page 13 graduate program. Yeah, if you, wanna, if you want more of this, come to Cedarville. I mean, who else is teaching this stuff, right? I mean, who else is teaching this practical stuff where you can literally take your idea and in 24 hours, be on the largest search engine in the world, right? Second largest. So I encourage you all, folks, listen, I've never been part of an awesome, more awesome place. God's doing so many cool things. You can get educated anywhere, but you can't get a biblical education that is growing at this rate that has the, the, the type of servant leadership, the type of... Um, excitement and passion and commitment to God's word. So I encourage you all, if you found value in this series, tell Cedarville, take a class, get your undergrad kids here. If you're a, an adult, consider grad school. They make it so easy. You can do this while you are um, having a job and we'll get you and your business up and running. All right. Thanks for having Q School. And uh, thanks for coming, everybody. We'll see you.